Well, doing a little maintenance, uh, just sharpening blades basically on this Cub Cadet uh, LT1045 that I've had for ever. I think I bought it in 2006. Um, put the floor jack under the front of it and uh, noticed that it's pretty common to have the wheels kind of wobbly. You know, not exactly precision steering on your lawnmower. <laughs> but I thought, well, hey, you know, this thing you know, might be a little excessive. It's old enough, you know, I grease it once a year, don't really maintenance the heck out of it. It's just a lawnmower and I'm kind of waiting for it to die to get a zero turn, but it just won't. Um, I figured I'd just take a look and see if there was like a nylon bushing or something, you know, underneath it that was causing a problem. And uh, I think I, tr I might have stumbled onto something really cool here. Um, I already took the one side apart to do some measuring just to see if it was uh, a part missing. I looked through the uh, factory manuals for it and stuff and couldn't find anything on their parts diagram of a bushing or anything like that to keep just metal from metal contact, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, but uh, I did stumble across, I think, what's going to be pretty slick to keep this thing from eating itself and also should help with the, uh, the actual steering of it. So let me show you what I have. It's a very, very simple uh, to pull these things apart. Um, I think maybe some mowers actually have like a castle nut on top. This Cub Cadet has just a, a pound on retention washer because there's really no force um, when you, well, you're never going to really ramp this thing or whatever. So it's just a very simple little flat washer. You got to tap off with a chisel, um, take you a couple minutes to get it apart. And uh, I think we might be onto something pretty neat for the old, the old cubby here. So I'll kind of show you what I was looking at, um, the play in it, and I was thinking something was missing here, and it's all just greasy. This is the side I haven't popped apart yet. Let's see if we can do that. So your cap pops right off, and this one just has a, a little retention um, washer or whatever you want to call it. Let me see if I can clean that up just a touch. And that's all there is. Your pry bar underneath it gets it wiggling up. And then you just, I stuck a pry bar down underneath this lower section to put tension on this, then just use a little chisel to pop it up. And then you're left with, this pretty much is it. Very simple configuration we got going here. Obviously, I started noticing there's a bunch of wear down at the bottom on the back side. So this thing's just rubbing against the bottom of the socket that it's in. So I started looking around for a little couple poly bushings or something of this diameter. Um, and then I remembered from rebuilding a steering column a while back that I ran across a whole bunch of different um, flat needle bearings. And this kit come off eBay. I'll flash a, a picture of everything here in just a second so you can get part numbers. But for both sides, you get two bearings, four washers, and it just so happens that that fits pretty darn snug onto that stem. Well, anytime you really reduce any kind of wear, it's going to last longer, but it's also going to steer easier. Not that it's a horrible job to steer this anyways. But I like to draw most straight lines, so I'm turning a bajillion times in my yard. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and grease this up, try to pack as much as I can. Pack all this up, I'm gonna re-grease the whole shaft, re-grease this assembly, and then uh, take this and hopefully this is reusable. This is just a very simple locking mechanism to lock the shaft down like I showed you on the other side. And uh, get her greased up and take her for a spin and see if, see if it makes any difference. Getting that kind of wear, I'm guessing that's probably quite a bit of the uh, the struggle turning it back and forth easily, especially low speed. So we'll see if it works. If you're wanting to double check, um, get out your old friend Mike here, and you don't have to disassemble this all the way if you don't need if you don't want to. You can just pop the dust cap off. Uh, if you look at this side, measure the top of the stem. Uh, it's about 19 millimeter. And uh, closest I could find, I'm pretty sure this is right at 20 millimeter. Yeah. So that was about as close as I could get for actual fitting it properly. Um, definitely going to work. 
But just a little trick I figured I'd throw you in on so you didn't take time to pop this loose and then go, oh, I gotta put it back together or wait two days for Amazon to deliver it. I'll try to catch as much of this as possible. It's pretty straightforward, but um, I really like this red and tacky from Lucas. It's pretty hard to beat this stuff. I do as well, all my wheel bearings and stuff like that. Boats, tractors, whatever. It should work perfect for this. Uh, you're not going to be able to grease this bearing just because of where the grease zerk is. It's only going to actually lubricate this uh, shaft of the wheel. So I'm going to pack this up pretty good. And it might just be one of those things to where <laughs> in a year when I'm doing my next <laughs> blade sharpening, just to spend another six bucks if it's worth it or not. But uh, real simple. Just going to put some grease down first. Let me put one washer down. And we'll just wipe up anything left over at the end of this whole messy operation. And then with your bearing, just try to pack it in the needles as much as you can. This isn't like a wheel bearing on a car, so not too horribly important. And then once we put this dude on there, then it's just a matter of another washer. Stick the, uh, I don't know if you want to call it spindle or whatever, up in there. Yeah. I'll add a little bit more here. Nice. <clears throat> Might as well add a little while you got her open. Just wipe it all down with a rag, nothing real crazy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this spindle in and just lower it down from the floor jack. And that is going to put pressure on my front end. And hopefully allow me to put this uh, little tension nut back on there. What I planned on doing <laughs> is take your little washer, set her up on top of that bad boy, and I found that a 21 millimeter deep is the same size as this washer, but allows the shaft to go through. So as soon as I can find my stinking hammer, Voila. I will grease it again through this and it's just that simple to put it together. The grease cap just pops back on and uh, you're off and running. In theory. <laughs> I'm going to whip the other side together quick, wipe everything up a little bit and give her a, give her a shot. So I'm hoping that this makes quite a bit of difference. I can't see how it wouldn't, but you never know. I can't hear much.